This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection and service. The keyboard market is so saturated right now. I feel like I say that on every keyboard review, but what gravitates a user or a gamer towards a specific brand as they all seem to offer diverse price points, dif different um, physical appearance, different switches. Uh, but now the emphasis seems to be placed on lighting and a unique switch. And these two points, the lighting and the unique Romo G switch, is exactly the emphasis of the new Logitech G810 Orient Spectrum. They've taken the feedback from people that were asking for, you know, to simplify the body because the gamery appearance of the G910 wasn't to everyone's liking. But here's the caveat, the price is $159. The main competitor to this would be the Corsair Strafe RGB, which is $10 less. It comes with a metal body and included wrist rest and extra set of keycaps and this exclusive MX Cherry silent switches. And so to sweeten the pot, Logitech includes a free game, Tom Clancy's The Division, with the GA10 until April 1st. And the reasoning behind this, the keyboard lighting will be integrated with the game to really show off that next level of interaction through your peripherals, which I cannot wait to try. So moving on, the GA10 is more in line with the bare bones design with no unnecessary additions. And notice there are no macro G keys here because Logitech has cleverly integrated macro functionality into F1 through F12 keys, thus giving users these secondary commands if needed without expanding the physical profile of the keyboard. It is a full sized uh, layout with media controls and the volume wheel on the right. And I think this is me being very picky, but why are these buttons round? In Logitech's entire history of gaming keyboards, these controls have always you know, fitted with the rest of the keyboard design, but here to me, they feel a little bit foreign. And also included is a Windows Disable key uh, and lighting on off switch. However, I do appreciate the low profile nature of these keys and even perky lighting uh, on these buttons. The body has some serious weight to it with a plastic housing that feels okay. It doesn't attract any finger marks, so that's awesome. Although the sides of the keyboard are glossy and also not sure why the bottom has this line design, which again is questionable. However, here we find five large rubber feet along with this uh, three-step angle adjustment, which is appreciated. The cable is non-removable and has a large protective rubber housing right out of the body, which I don't find attractive. I would have preferred maybe a removable cable or a less uh, or a more low profile one. And the cable here is also braided. It's fairly thick, which makes uh, kind of difficult to twist in place, but uh, at least it is durable. Now, for those not familiar with the Roma G switch, uh, it is Logitech's own creation with a custom stem. So replacing keycaps is out of question, but this proprietary design means gorgeous lighting with a bright RGB LED per key that is centered. So the lighting is perfectly uniform. Uniform. It does not illuminate the underplate of the keys, which is something we are starting to see more of. So I hope Logitech takes that into account for their next keyboard. Now the Roma G switch has some unique properties, but it's not for everybody, um, especially for people coming off MX Cherry switches or Topper switches or some hybrid Topper switches. You'll definitely feel the much shorter actuation distance of 1.5 millimeters until that key is actually registered. It requires 45 grams of uh, actuation force. The key is not linear, so there's a very faint tactile bump. So you know when the key passes that actuation point. And when I first got the keyboard, the switches did not feel mechanical at all. It was almost like a hybrid between, you know, rubber dome and simply mechanical because by nature, I'm used to having the key travel to be, you know, much further down uh, before actuation happens. Uh, but with the Roma G, because the actuation is so much faster, you have to almost adjust your liftoff force so that you don't fully bottom out the key and therefore you can type and do uh, actually activate the switch much faster than before. And also I wanna say that in the beginning, the keys almost felt mushy uh, because I bottomed out the keys all the time as I'm used to from my other mechanical keyboards. But if you bottom out uh, the key, as it rises, it passes that uh, little tactile bump and it almost slows down the key bounce. And therefore it feels like the key isn't uh, responsive or as responsive to bounce back to its original position. So if you can, 
adjust your forcing distance so you never bottom out the key. The keys will feel much faster. And to me, that actually has been a great benefit for both gaming and typing. And so only after a few days, I'm actually getting to love the Switch, uh, which is very speedy. Typing is fantastic because you don't need to apply much force. It's almost like uh, quickly tapping away on those keycaps. And the same goes for gaming, although I noticed that I was applying a lot more pressure than needed in games, like holding shift or using WASD to move around. But the light nature of the Switch means no fatiguing fingers, and that's awesome. Although for the price, we definitely need to see a wrist rest of some sort just to complement this whole comfort situation. And so now on to lighting, which is highly customizable and definitely one of the greatest benefits of the Romer G Switch. So first of all, in this freestyle mode, every single Illuminate portion on the keyboard can be changed. The logo in the corner, all of the media keys, and even the num caps and scroll lock LEDs can be configured to whatever color you want, making this one of the only keyboards on the market to offer this feature. You simply dial in one of the colors on screen with vibrancy and brightness adjustment and select the keys that color should be assigned to. Every color on the wheel is very accurate, except white which gives off this very pinkish hue. Now, I love the absence of an apply button, so everything is synced up immediately, and you can also visualize gaming profiles here that will be enabled when a supporting game is launched. Then we have this zone mode that simplifies the selection process, and then this multiple effects can be uh, turned on, like smooth breeding, a unique start effect, which I really like, but wonder where it would be actually useful. A simple color cycle with speed control, color wave with direction adjustment and speed to make the keyboard freak out if you're into that sort of thing. And finally, the key press, which I really like for typing scenarios, just to see those keys fade as you hammer away at the keyboard. And so as you saw, the lighting effects are plenty, but now remember we can reassign uh, F1 to F12 keys as your macro commands. The only thing, the only caveat, it's not like a secondary command. It's not like you press function to F1 to activate that command. That command will replace the original function of that key. Uh, but the cool thing is you can create multiple profiles. So if you ever need to go back and revert to the original functionality of those F keys, you can simply go ahead and create just a standard profile and any profiles that has those macros enabled, like a gaming profile. And to finish off this review, I gotta say that my impression on the Roma G changed over time. In the beginning, I didn't care so much for it. It reminded me too much of a rubber dome, but after I got to use it for gaming and typing, I love the faster actuation uh, distance because you can basically type super quick with just tapping on the keys, especially because the key is very light. And also the actuation distance is smaller so that actuation timing is actually faster and it's awesome in games where it makes sense, like CSGO. So reloading uh, by switching onto another weapon is much faster now and the same thing goes for when you fire a sniper rifle and you need to switch to a different weapon so that the sniper rifle reloads in that process. That's awesome. I've never been as quick as I am with the Roma G with any other keyboard. And the final remark is really about the price. With the bundled free game, it's okay, especially with the Division, which is a $70 value. Plus, you'll get the custom air lighting API that will roll out to give you a little bit extra interactivity between the game and the peripheral. But after April 1st, $159 is quite expensive for sort of a bare bones uh, keyboard. Yes, sure, fancy lighting and a uh, custom switch, but it's not going to be for everybody and would highly recommend you if you do like the, the physical appearance and the lighting customization and if you like the Roma G switch, wait for it to go on sale because then it would definitely be worth it. And so that concludes this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe and comment below if you'd like us to check out the custom API with the Division game. We can you know, give you more of an in-depth look on how the lighting works on your keyboard with what is happening on the screen. I'm Dimitri with Hyrule Canucks. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.